You know, the Bible says, faith is believing in what is not seen. Today, unfortunately, many in the media would like nothing better to ridicule Christians. They promote the Da Vinci Code, they place doubt in the public's mind that Christ was not risen, and they condemn the passion of Christ. Yet they sensationalize stories that call for the end of prayer in school and removing the name of God from our country's pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, these are very sad times when we allow the minority to poison the minds of the majority. This is exactly what dictators and socialist rulers did. When it comes to our Christianity, there is no gray area. It is either you believe or you don't believe. And if you believe, you believe with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Jesus was put through some challenging circumstances that we cannot even fathom. Yet, the more he was challenged to prove who he was, the people did not believe him. Those people, no matter what Jesus did, could not, he could not prove that he was the Son of God. Even his own disciple Thomas, Mr. Doubting Thomas, did not believe. John 20.25 20, tells us that Thomas said, Unless I see the hands, the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand on his side, I will not believe. And Jesus replied, Put your finger here, and see my hand, and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Having you believe because you have seen me, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. Today I ask you the question, how is your faith? Is Jesus, if Jesus appeared to you right now, would you recognize him? Would you question him like Thomas? Would you ask him to perform miracles to prove himself? Would you have doubts? In today's society, we will trust the car salesman and the government more than we trust in the Lord. My faith has been tested many times throughout my professional and political career and my personal life as well. But I tell you, my faith and my belief in the Holy Spirit that I was able to overcome those trials. Just a few years ago, I had an accident that I should have not recovered and survived from. The only reason I survived was because God heard my professed commitment to Him. I firmly believe that the pathway to blessings is to not forsake God. Give Him. Give Him what you have and let him do with it what he can. If you want God to bless you, you must be faithful and obedient. You know, God whips up a storm to let us know that we're not in control. Some folks feel that they themselves or the country doesn't need God. This is arrogance, my friend. More than ever before, we need him for guidance, direction, and strength. You know, it's funny that when these storms are brewing up, you never hear anyone praying to Satan. In the midst of a storm, God will find a way to humble us because he states that he is in control. You see, God is above and he knows what's coming down. We only see what's in front of us, but he has a bigger picture and sees the whole world. Man does not have all the answers. Some of our political leaders bow down to scientists and let them have the stage to push their evolution. But there's nothing, nothing a scientist can make that is exactly like what God creates. If I leave you with nothing today, 
Please take away that you must always trust and have faith in God. Trust him to give you the strength to fight back against those who want to take God out of our country. Trust him to give you the wisdom to speak out against injustice and blasphemy of his name. Trust God to guide your path to bring about a righteous government. And thank him every day of your life for this country and the liberties and the freedoms that we enjoy. Our greatest blessings come out of our greatest trials. Ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is in a fight and it is one of the greatest trials we've seen in modern times. Without a doubt, America and her people are in great need of prayer, divine guidance, protection, to have good, solid Christians to step up and lead this country on a proper moral path. I firmly believe that if we magnify God, our problems will be minimized. <laughs> Having true, unconditional faith in God and in his beloved son, Jesus Christ, we will survive the world wrongs and receive God's greatest blessings. May God bless you all.